Hi, I'm DJ Ware. On this episode of the Cyber Gizmo, I'm going to be looking at ZFS for Linux 2.0 right after this. So it used to be called ZFS on Linux. It's not anymore. Uh, the name has changed. It's now OpenZFS 2.0, and that's the same on all platforms, whether it be FreeBSD and even uh, ZFS on Mac OS X. So that's what we're going to be looking at today is kind of an introduction to this and what some of the new features are. I am in the process of compiling and running tests on it right now, so I won't be doing a video demo of it just yet, uh, but I will be very soon, I hope. Uh, so, what is it? So, on November the 30th, they, uh, the OpenZFS team released uh, 2.0. It had been in a number of release candidates, and you can see that they were still working on a, quite a long list of issues that they kept finding. And that's fine, you know, take your time, guys. I mean, there's no hurry. Just make it right, get it right, get it working. Uh, and so, uh, <clears throat> FreeBSD has already released it, and, and uh, we'll talk about that at the end. But if your Linux distribution uses DKMS, you'll probably be able to get this up and running pretty quickly. However, if you're on something like Ubuntu, it'll, which uses the modules, you'll probably have a little bit harder of a time getting it to install. Uh, and there's um, uh, Jonathan F. has a PPA that he's working on to actually get a package built for us on Ubuntu and, and those kinds of releases. So... Uh, of course, you can always build it from source, and <laughs> I never recommend that to people. That's not for the faint of heart, unless you're unless you're used to developing large projects and compiling them. There's quite a few packages in here. If you're interested in doing that, there is extensive documentation on what your build environment needs to look at, needs to look like, depending upon your particular distro that you're using. Please pay attention to that and make sure that everything is set up the way they indicate. Otherwise, you may not get a successful compile, and you may have issues trying to run it. Uh, if you, as long as you have a kernel that's 310 to 510, it should work fine. Uh, so, yeah, that's 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 where that's where I'm going to leave it. I'm not going to go any further with that. Uh, so, what's new? The big the big thing is, of course, this is a merge between the code bases, uh, free uh, free BSD, and uh, the Linux uh, open, uh, the, the former ZFS on Linux. So, so they're trying to bring the, everything together so that there's one code base that's used for all of the in, all the installations of ZFS. And that has a number of advantages, of course. It allows us to create ZFS pools on whatever distro we want and then be able to move, uh, you know, do a send and receive between any distro. I think that's kind of the goal. Uh, here and also to be able to you know f mix and match uh, your your cloud storage uh, depending upon what distro you need to run depending upon what's underneath of it what the what the underlying software is going to need in order to support that so some of the new features is there's something called the sequential resilver in the past when 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 ZFS issued a resilver, and usually that's when you add a drive or you're replacing a broken drive, <clears throat> it issues a resilvering uh, uh, command that then starts to basically make sure that all the data is copied to the new device. So, um, so and that if if you were on a, I'm going to call it an array. So if you were on an array that was pretty full. That process took longer than it would normally take a RAID to do because essentially it had to it had to do a lot of comparison and, and all this stuff back and forth. Well, they've added a sequential resilver, which if you do have arrays that are fairly full, uh, ZFS will now employ either the older technique of, of copying just the bo blocks that changed and skipping over those that didn't. So it still uses that. But if there is a significantly large section of blocks that, that uh, it needs to copy, it will revert to a sequential resilvering, which just makes that process faster. We hope. Uh, the other one is uh, L2ARC. In the past, that those have not been uh, persistent. They have to rebuild every time that you do a import, uh, a ZFS export, a ZFS import cycle. So 
That's changed. There's now a persistent version of the L2 ARC. And so once that cache gets built up, it gets reused. Um, I'm not sure. It can't, it, it, just an off the, off the, I'm not sure how you can flush. Off the, there's still, I have a lot of questions still on how things work. So I'll get to that when I, when I do. Uh, when I get into it a little bit deeper, but you know, caching is always an issue on how, how do you clean it out and, and update it, make sure that it's fresh. Um, STD compression, that's an algorithm that uh, is an inline uh, compression algorithm. It's meant to offer the same type of compression as GZIP, but still have the CPU overhead of the, of the older LZ4. Nothing wrong with LZ4, but uh, if you want a little bit heavier compression, you can do that without having to suffer a penalty that, that takes more of your CPU to do it. <laughs> Redacted replication. This is going to take me a while to understand, get my head wrapped around this, but the idea is that you can exclude sensitive data from a, a uh, replication task between two ZFS pools. So if you... If you want to, uh, if you want to do that, you can. You just set up. You set up the uh, the the snapshot the way you did before. But then there's an option where you can go through and delete out the sensitive files that you don't want, and then create bookmarks, which then mark which data is actually going to get sent across. I'm not quite sure. I, I quite followed that explanation, so I need to work with it more to really wrap my head around this one. Let it sink in for a bit. It seems, to me, that seems a little cumbersome, but there's better ways to do that. But, okay, we can, we can let's just try it out and see how well that works. Uh, there's also higher performance versions of ZFS Destroy and ZFS Receive and ZFS Send. So they've actually increased the performance of those commands. Quite significant is what I understand. Don't know yet, haven't measured it. A number of other commands have been uh, deprecated, uh, deduplication. Of course, we know what those problems were in the older versions of ZFS. Send streams, dedupa ditto blocks, and uh, ZFS VDEV are all deprecated. As far as as, as OpenZFS 2.0, it's out already for BSD, if, if uh, FreeBSD. If you have it, you can go to, and compile it through the ports, and it will automatically update the older ZFS that's on the that's installed with FreeBSD. Uh, TrueNAS Core 12 also has OpenZFS 2.0. I think they probably use something similar to do that, but I'm not sure if it's automated or whether you have to do it. Uh, but there, they based. Of course, they came out in October, and that was way before the end of November, obviously. But there is an update that they have planned, a U1 update plan for December 2020, which may incorporate the new release into it uh, as a native part of the install. So I'm not sure. Don't know. We'll see what happens. Uh, need to play with it. Again, something I need to work with and answer some questions that I have about it. It's not clear to me from the website, at least what limited part of it I read, whether or not uh, yep, that the ports compile is included, and then have they updated the packages from the release candidates that were available in October. Uh, so as I said, I am compiling and running the Z-Test uh, right now on Ubuntu 20.10. Uh, it did successfully compile. It took about 10, 15 minutes, I would guess, somewhere around there. Don't really pay attention to it. If you do want to uh, do the uh, source code compile, there are developer... Uh, steps that are on the OpenZFS for Linux website uh, that you can go to, and they have been updated for 2.0. It'll tell you what, what packages you need to have installed prior to doing the uh, build, and then the commands that you can run in order to initiate a bunch of Z tests to make sure that your installation is working. There are two ways you can do the build. Uh, what I chose to do was a ZFS tree build, which is just an inline so I can run run it inside of my home directory and test it out and make sure it's working fine. And the other way is you can have it actually create the packages that you need for your distribution to actually install. Have not done that yet. I won't do that until I've gone through the test for myself to make it sure it's going to work in my environment before I move on. So I don't plan on doing any benchmarks tonight, obviously. Uh, and I will follow up with a demo pretty soon, as soon as I get through my preliminary test. 
But one thing I'll mention in passing, the Mac OS team, uh, they were on what their version, I think they call it, uh, they called it OpenCFS for Mac OS 10, and the previous version for Catalina was 1.9.4. And they ran into some issues with it trying to get over to Big Sur. <laughs> Duh. And uh, <laughs> so they have been, they decided to go to the OpenZFS 2.0. And I think, uh, I think they pull their, their source, source code baselines from the Linux side. So, yeah, they had the release candidate 5. And then I saw that recently they had posted a OpenZFS 2.0 package for both Big Sur and Catalina. But I don't see any notes in the in the dialogue that goes along with the builds that says, "Hey, it's good. This is good to go. Go ahead and and use it." Uh, the last note I see in there from one of the devs was, "Just consider this a beta." <laughs> so <laughs> I don't know if that's still true. Of course, now that's only for Intel Max. Uh, I know they have run into some issues with ARM, and that probably is going to take much longer to solve. Not an issue for you guys that are on Linux. We don't really care. That's too bad. Sorry. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. Hate to, sorry to hear that, as all we can say. Um, but that's 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 pretty much all I had. It was just a real quick update, let you know what's going on. Uh, I have been waiting for this for a while, and, and I, I don't know why I didn't see it. I, I didn't see it until today, actually. And I guess I was just doing other things and uh, didn't see it until today that they had posted so I, uh, I'm going to get busy and uh, start trying to move. I'll, I'll work on the VM first, and then I will move it over to my test server, and I will stand it up with hardware and make sure that the ZFS uh, portions are working. I'll try to update. Then the next step would be to back up my FreeBSD and move that over to OpenZFS 2.0, bring it back up, run my test there, make sure it's fine, and then try to move data back and forth between them and see what happens. And then I'll do some benchmarks after that. So again, uh, as always, I should say, as always, please like and subscribe. Hope to see you all again real soon. Have a safe weekend. Bye for now.